Hi, it's Carrie. I don't know if I can do this in five minutes, but I'm sure going to try. Today's video is sort of a journal club on this article, What Kind of Systematic Review Should I Conduct? A Proposed Typology and Guidance for Systematic Reviewers in the Medical and Health Sciences. All of the authors are from JBI. Highly recommend that you read this article. It's great. But it gives us a table of question development frameworks that I think is really helpful, not just for systematic reviews, but for anybody undertaking any sort of inquiry. And so I'm going to go over those today. And there are 10, and I'm going to give you the framework and then a sample question. So let's jump right in. All credit to this article. So I've taken them directly from the article. And the first one is for questions of effectiveness it's the well-known PICO population intervention comparators or comparator and outcomes. Now a sample topic might look like this. What is the effectiveness of exercise for treating depression in adults compared to no treatment? Now I, I urge you to stop the video here and identify each element of this question matching it up to the elements on the left. But I'm going to keep going. The next question development framework is for questions of experience or experiential topics. PICO with a little o, population, phenomena of interest, and context. A sample topic might look like this. What is the experience of undergoing medical imaging in adult patients in high income countries? Again, feel free to stop the video here and match these elements up with the elements on the left. The next question is for questions of costs or economics. Peacock, population, intervention, comparator or comparators, outcomes and context. A sample topic might look like this. What is the cost effectiveness of self-monitoring? of blood glucose in type 2 diabetes in high income countries. The next question development framework is best for questions of prevalence or incidence, and it's one of my favorite because it sounds like a sweet cereal. COCOPOP stands for condition, context, and population. A sample topic might look like this. What is the prevalence incidence of claustrophobia and claustrophobic reactions in adult patients undergoing an MRI? The next framework is best for questions of diagnostic tests, PIRD, P-I-R-D, population, index test, reference test, and diagnosis of interest. A sample topic might look like this. What is the diagnostic test accuracy of the malnutrition screening tool compared to the patient-generated subjective global assessment among patients with colorectal cancer to identify undernutrition? The next question development framework is for questions of etiology and risk, PEO, population exposure, and outcome, and a sample topic might look like this. Are adults exposed to radon at a higher risk of developing lung cancer? The next framework is PICO with a little o for questions of expert opinion, population, intervention or phenomena of interest, and context. Sample topic, what are the policy strategies to reduce paternal mortality in birthing people in Cambodia? The next framework looks like this, questions of psychometrics, and they didn't give this acronym in the article, I made it up, it's too big, but it's, I'll call it COPOP time. Construct of interest, population, type of measurement instrument, and measurement properties. A sample topic, what is the reliability of specific methods, so named methods, to assess muscle strength in adults. Next one is suitable for questions of prognosis, PFO, population, prognostic factors, and outcome. Sample topic, in adults with low back pain, what is the association between individual recovery expectations and disability outcomes? And next we have 
Four, questions of methodology, so where you are investigating methods in research design. SDMO, which stands for types of studies, types of data, types of methods, and outcomes. Now here's a sample topic. What is the effect of blinded peer review for quantitative studies as it relates to study quality in published reports? And here's a summary of the question development frameworks that I went over today. They are all from the article that I'm going to link in the video description. Such a good article, not just useful for systematic reviews, but useful for any research question and also for creating a mental map and identifying your important search concepts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.